If you are a mouth breather, snore, or have trouble breathing through your nose, you may be a candidate for nasal procedure called septoplasty and turbinate reduction. For your understanding, we will first describe briefly the anatomy of the nasal cavity. The wall that divides the left and right side of your nose is called the nasal septum. This wall is made up of both bone and cartilage. For some, the septum may be crooked or deviated. This may have occurred from trauma perhaps as a child, or you may have been born with a deviated septum. Correcting the septum is called a septuplasty. The turbinates are the fleshy shelves on the side of the nasal cavity that congest from an allergy or cold and decongest. If the turbinates are inflamed for long periods, they may become persistently enlarged, causing blockage of the nose and sinuses. The turbinates are very important structures. They moisturize, filter, and warm air that flows through the nose. Turbinate reduction is the technique often performed with the septoplasty to reduce the size of the turbinates. Both techniques begin after given a general anesthesia. Once you're asleep, a single incision is made inside the nose to access the cartilage of the septum. This incision is not visible. The septum is then straightened by reshaping the bone and cartilage. The turbinates are reduced by removing a small bone from the inside of the turbinates. This allows the turbinate to collapse without destroying the outer layer or mucosal layer of the turbinate, which participates in keeping the nose moist and directing airflow. Once this is complete, a plastic splint is placed to prevent the septum from moving as well as reducing the risk of scar formation. The total time for this nasal procedure typically takes 20 to 45 minutes depending on the complexity. After your surgery, there are three common complaints. The first is that you will not be able to breathe well through your nose, although the plastic splints have a channel that allows you to breathe. This channel often becomes clogged. Dr. Pasha does not use packing or cotton in the nose unless you have a serious bleed. If you speak to other patients who have had a nasal operation by another surgeon, they may say the worst part of the procedure is when they remove the packing. You will not have this experience. Secondly, you will have post-operative drainage for two to four days. Finally, you will be sore for the first few days. Significant pain and discomfort after that is uncommon. Occasionally, one may develop secondary sinus pressure that is instantly relieved when the splints are removed six to seven days later. This is not a cosmetic procedure and the nasal bones are not touched. Only the inside of your nose is changed. No one should be able to recognize you had a nasal operation except for the fact that you breathe better. Septoplasty and turbinate reduction are routine cases with rare complications. The most common risk of the procedure is bleeding. If this occurs, you may require nasal packing, which is often removed in the operating room to avoid further discomfort. The risk of general anesthesia, as well as other rare complications, will be discussed with you in the office. Patients find that nasal surgery provides a dramatic difference in the way they breathe. Many patients who are lifetime mouth breathers are shocked by the benefits of breathing properly through their nose. We hope that you have a better understanding of nasal surgery, and we look forward to helping you breathe freely both day and night. For more information or to schedule an appointment, please visit PashaMD.com or call us at 713-523-8800.